Hello everyone, my name is Daniel Skelton and I am the pastor at Dogwood Prairie United Methodist Church as well as Seed at Chapel United Methodist Church in Oblong, Illinois. And it's a blessing to be able to share the Word of God with you wherever you are and whatever you happen to be doing. I pray that this message today influences your life, inspires you to become a better disciple today than what you were yesterday. I pray that through the words that God has given me to share with you, that your heart is filled with love that your mind is, is filled with wisdom, your body with strength, and your Holy Spirit with determination and encouragement to take the next step. So whatever is said through these words today, remind yourself that there's something in these words that God needs you to hear. You may not get it right away, you may not get it today, you may not get it tomorrow, but there is something in these words that we all need to hear. We all need to take to heart as we truly become the disciple that Christ has called us to be. So I pray that these words truly impact your life and thank you for tuning in and joining me. I like to start off these recordings simply by reminding us, reminding us of the simple fact. The Word of God cannot be something that we simply put on a shelf, take down once a year, or take down only when we need it. The Word of God can't be contained. It's contagious. It's everywhere. It needs to be felt and embodied and experienced every day of our life. That's that needs to be experienced on a Monday, on a Tuesday, on a Wednesday, on a Thursday, on a Friday, on a Saturday, and on a Sunday, and back to Monday. The Word of God is meant to be experienced and embodied and embraced every day of the week, every week of the month, every month of the year, and every year of your life. So the Word of God is not something to put on a shelf and to be contained in a little container and stuffed somewhere, or rather it's contagious. It's everywhere you go, everything you do, Everything you say, the Word of God is always with you because it lives within your heart. This message is a special, special message and I'm honored and blessed to be able to share this message with you all. And it's special because it's Mother's Day. This sermon, this, this message is being recorded for Mother's Day. And, and Mother's Day is a time during the year where we set aside our our daily routines to focus on the mothers or mother-like figures in our life, to, to let them know how appreciative of we are of them, to, to show them how much, to how much we love them, how much we care for them, right? To let them know that they are truly special in their life. So I want to wish every mother, every mother-like figure in, in this world a happy Mother's Day. Because of you, because of your care and your support, your support, because of your endless hugs, because of your willingness to embrace us, because of your never-ending love, because of your your gift of caring to, to put a band-aid on our on our on our owies and our scrapes and to wipe away our tears and to be there with a Kleenex when we need it, to be a shoulder to lean on. Because of all these things and so much more, you have helped us become the person we are today. You have motivated us, strengthened us, encouraged us, put us on the right path, and have promised us that you're always going to be there. You're always going to be there to make us feel special and unique, to make us feel warm and comforted, and to know that we are loved when no one else wants to love us. You are truly a gift to us, and we thank God every day for that gift, for you, being in our life. I also want to recognize that not all of our mothers are here with us physically on this earth. Some of them are in heaven watching over us, so it's okay to honor those mothers as well, because they still teach us lessons today. Their words of wisdom are still heard in our ears, and their love is still felt within our heart. So happy Mother's Day to all those mothers that are watching from above or that are physically walking beside us today. Happy Mother's Day to you. And just as a reminder to all of us, every day is Mother's Day. So take time to thank a mother today and to show them how much you love them and appreciate them and acknowledge of how important they are in your life for being the gift that God has given you. Happy Mother's Day. Today, to honor the mothers, we're going to set aside our sermon series and we're going to focus on Proverbs chapter 31. And that's a, that's a proverb, a chapter that 
King Solomon or King Lemuel is, is, has been given advice from his own mom and saying, you know what, this is what a woman looks like. This is what a woman does. And we're going to relate that to telling us that this is what a mother does. This is what a mother looks like. This is everything that a mother will do to make sure that those in her life are loved, cared for, and supported each and every day. So we're going to be looking at Proverbs chapter 31, specifically verses 10 through 31. So if you have a Bible nearby, I invite you to go ahead and open that Bible to Proverbs chapter 31, verses 10 through 31, and I'll be reading and sharing it with you from the NRSV translation. So this is verse 10 of Proverbs chapter 31. A woman of strength who can find. She is far more precious than jewels. The heart of her husband trusts in her, and he will have no lack of gain. She does him good and not harm all the days of her life. She seeks wool and flax and works with willing hands. She is like the ships of the merchant. She brings her food from far away. She rises while it is still night and provides food for her household and tasks for her female servants. She considers a field and buys it. With the fruit of her hands, she plants a vineyard. She girds herself with strength and makes her arms strong. She perceives that her merchandise is profitable. Her lamp does not go out at night. She puts her hands to the distaff and her hands hold the spindle. She opens her hand to the poor and reaches out her hands to the needy. She is not afraid for her household when it snows, for all her household are clothed in crimson. She makes herself coverings. Her clothing is fine linen and purple. Her husband is known in the city gates, taking his seat among the elders of the land. She makes linen garments and sells them. Her sup she supplies the merchant with sashes or clothing. Strength and dignity are her clothing, and she laughs at the time to come. She opens her mouth with wisdom, and the teaching of kindness is on her tongue. She looks well to the ways of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. Her children rise up and call her happy, her husband too, and he praises her. Many women have, been, have done excellently, but you, you surpass them all. Charm is deceitful and beauty is vain, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Give her a share in the fruit of her hands and let her works be praised. Let her works praise her in the city gates. This is the word of God for the people of God, and all God's people said, thanks be to God. Today is Mother's Day, a day signed into law by President Woodrow Wilson in 1914. Today is Mother's Day, a day when families pay special tribute to the to the moms in various ways. We take them out to dinner, we buy them special gifts, present them with flowers, and maybe do the dishes, cook a meal, do the laundry, help with the cleaning, and let them take a quick nap before we need them, because we can't figure out how to preheat the oven for the dessert that they made the night before for themselves. Today is Mother's Day, the day when we give our mothers and mother-like figures our love show our deep appreciation for what they do day in and day out, and realize that they are God's gift to us, to teach us, to direct us, to help us to be a living and breathing source of God's eternal heart. Today is Mother's Day. Here are some facts about mothers. According to Haba.com, there are roughly 82.5 million mothers in the United States, more than 2 billion worldwide. And the average mom will have changed approximately 7,300 diapers by the time her baby reaches the age of just two. Speaking of babies, according to Town & Country Magazine, the moniker or name mom comes from babies. The first thing most babies can vocalize is the m sound, which is why in almost every language the word for mother begins with the letter M. Furthermore, this magazine shared in a recent article focusing on mothers. Mother's Day is celebrated all over the world. 
In 2022, over three, over $31 billion was spent on Mother's Day. More calls are made on Mother's Day than any other day of the year. Approximately 122 million calls are made on Mother's Day. Lastly, the sound of a mother's voice lowers a child's stress hormone and raises their level of oxytocin, a hormone linked with love and bonding. A mother's love and a mother's voice are truly something special to each and every one of us. When you think about your mother or the mother-like figures in your life, what do you think about? Do you think about all the diapers they have changed, all the chores they somehow accomplished before you even got up in the morning? The lessons they taught you, the stories they shared, the comfort of their voice, the warm embrace of their hugs, or even the love that never goes away? What comes to mind when you think about your mother? This question is what King Solomon, the author of 3,000 Proverbs and 1,005 Songs, and the author of our text today, wants, wants us to ponder today and every day of our lives. What is a mother? In March of 1999, I received a book titled, I Love You, Stinky Face, from my mom, written by Lisa McCart. In this book, a young boy seeks to know how much his mom loves him. He asks, Mama, what if I were a big, scary ape? Would you still love me? And the mother responds, I love you, my big, scary ape. Not quite sure, the boy asks, but Mama, what if I were a super smelly skunk and I smelled so bad that my name was Stinky Face? And the mother responds, I love you, Stinky Face. Then the boy talks about being an alligator, a dinosaur, a swamp monster, a green alien, and finally a cyclops. And each time the mother responds, I love you. The mother's love is stronger and bigger than any type of thing, being or even monster, that we might become in our life. This love is what King Solomon writes about in Proverbs 31 when he describes a mother. In Proverbs 31, we begin to see what makes up a godly mom. President Abraham Lincoln once said that no man is poor who had a godly mother. Because of my mother, I feel as if I am the richest person alive. I have been given all that I need to succeed and become the person that I am meant to be. She has given me the strength, the love, the encouragement, all the resources of life that I need, to, that I need in order to become who I am meant to become. I'm the richest person alive because of my mom. Additionally, because of my mother, whenever she comes to visit, my pantry usually is usually restocked with animal crackers and potato chips and peanut butter, the, right? The three essentials of life. So not only am I spiritually rich and, and loved richly, but occasionally yeah, I get some food items that help me fulfill what she has envisioned for me to become. Because of my mother, I have more than I need. I have everything and more. And I know that just from the way she says, I love you. At the very start of Proverbs 31, we get a glimpse of a mother who wants nothing more than to provide for her son, nothing more to make her son feel rich and loved. Her son is King Lemuel, with, and, and she seeks to instill this message in his heart to respect, revere, and, all, and honor all the women in his life. Not just for her, but for every woman in his life. Proverbs 31 verse 1 states, The words of King Lemuel, an oracle that his mother taught him. For starters, there isn't much information pertaining to this King Lemuel figure. As a matter of fact, there is no King Lemuel mentioned in the history of Israel. Which is why some have come to believe that King Lemuel is is a pet name, a nickname, given to King Solomon by his mother, Sheba, as in Bathsheba, the one who King David spots bathing as he was walking upon his rooftop, right? You can just imagine, right? Sheba going down the hallway saying, King Lemuel, King Lemuel, I need you, I, I need you, I seek you out. A pet name, something that the two of them only share. King Solomon's mother pulls him aside and provides him with an oracle. 
a divine utterance, a prayer, something that has been weighing upon her shoulders and which can bring respect to all women. I'm sure throughout your lifetime, you can remember something in which your mother told you that, that changed your life, that helped you see the world through her eyes. Sheba offers nine key elements to King Solomon or King Lemuel that we should take to heart on this Mother's Day as these things help us understand how important and how deep and profound a mother's love truly is for all of us in our life. Sheba begins her lesson by talking about worth. Proverbs 31, chapter 10, verse 11 states, A woman of strength who can find. She is far more precious than jewels. The heart of her husband trusts in her, and, and he will have no lack of gain. A mother is virtuous. A mother is noble. A mother is righteous. A mother is of excellence. Although she may say the wrong thing at times and not always do what she means, she is still excellent and righteous in the sight of God because she is a blessing to all. She is a gift that deserves our trust. We may not always agree with what our mothers have told us or are telling us today, but we know that what they're telling us is something that we need to hear, something that has been given to them through God to help us understand who we are in this world, to help us understand that we need to trust them. Ruth, in chapter 3 of the book of, of Ruth, is noted as a virtuous woman by Boaz because of what she was willing to do to protect her family, to give herself to Boaz, to, to gain trust through him. King Solomon also notes, a mother is worth, a mother is worth more than jewels or diamonds. It has been noted that rubies and diamonds are exceptionally durable stone. A mother is not equal to a ruby or valued just a little more than a ruby, but is far more precious than a ruby, than any diamond, than any jewel ever imaginable or created. A mother's value is priceless and beyond any price tag given to any ruby, diamond, or jewel. A mother is worth more than any precious jewel because she is virtuous and trustworthy. A mother is of worth. After talking about a mother's worth and value and trust, King Solomon turns to the work of, of a fearless mother in Proverbs 31, verses 12 through 24, and offers us nine different traits. So this worth value is not necessarily the first trait. It is the first trait, but it's not included in the nine because it sets the stage for what is to come. Within this worth that a mother has are all these traits. This worth, again, is priceless. It's her love. It's what she gives us day in and day out. And so this is the first one, the first trait that we get. Number one, a mother's motive and heart. Verse 12 says, she does him good and no harm all the days of her life. A mother strives to do good, not just one day of the week or when she feels like it, but every day of her life. She strives to be led by the footsteps of love. I don't know about you, but it's tough and hard work to always do good. I could be sitting on the couch, not around anyone, and, and still be blamed for something, still have this feeling that I'm being blamed for something. I could be put on trial because the power went out during a storm, and it's my fault for not being able to control the weather. It's tough to always do good. It's tough to always do good and to always do the right thing. Even when we think we are doing good, we might be causing harm. But a mother, even when we disagree with her and talk back to her and claim that we know more than she does, is only trying to do good so that we too can walk in the footsteps of love. A mother has a motive to do good. Number two. A mother is a hard worker and has measure. Verses 13 through 15 note, she seeks wool and flax and works with willing hands. She is like the, sheeps of the ships of the merchant. She brings her food from far away. She rises while it is still night and provides food for her household and, and tasks for her female servants. In verse 24, we read, she makes linen garments and sells them. She supplies the merchants with clothing. 
a mother is a hard worker. I can't even begin to count all the projects that my mom helped me with during school, all the trips to school because I forgot something at home, and all the late and all the late nights baking something for a school party the next day or just answering my phone calls and text messages at weird hours throughout the day. I can't even fathom everything that she sacrificed for me to prove that she's a hard worker. In addition to all those things, she found time to make meals, do laundry, wash dishes, clean the house, plant a garden, attend every sporting event, listen to every choir or band concert, and still work a 40-hour job. How did she do it? I don't know. I don't know, and I can't even begin to describe how she did it. Maybe, maybe our mothers are superheroes, right? They're superheroes. They're superwomen. The mother is a hard worker. And even when it seemed like her work was done, there was something else. A mother goes above and beyond because she loves who God has put in her life. And through her work, she provided not only food, but provided a comforting presence. She's got a motive. She's a hard worker. Third, a mother does what she can to provide for tomorrow. Through her management, she considers a field and buys it. With the fruit of her hands, she plants a vineyard. Proverbs 31, verse 16. What a mother does today impacts and affects tomorrow. What a mother plants grows into something beautiful tomorrow. A mother considers the work of the present and prays that what she does today will be remembered, used, cherished, and passed on to future generations. What she's willing to do today is not just because she wants to, it's because she's been called to do so, so that you and I have a future, have something to lean on tomorrow. What she's planning today affects who we are tomorrow. So a mother plans for the unknown and plants and prays that what she plants grows into something godly. Fourth, a mother is strong. She has muscles. Proverbs 31, 17 reminds us she girds herself with strength and makes her arms strong. A mother is willing to get the job done. To roll up her sleeves to be the next image for a Rosie the Riveter poster. There should be an amen after that, right? A mother is willing to get the job done. Amen. And we can just leave it at that. My mother, just like my grandma, loves being outside. Just, just last year, she decided that she would start helping my dad mow the yard. And, and she does a good job. She does. But once in a while, my dad will still end up mowing the entire yard the next day after my mom just mowed. My point is, a mother is willing to help, and she is strong in what she does, even if what she does is not always perfect. A mother is strong on multiple levels. She may be physically strong, emotionally strong, mentally strong, or even spiritually strong. No matter where her strength lies, she will always be strong for those that she loves. She will always be strong for those that she loves. Our mothers get the job done. Number five, a mother is full of ministry. Proverbs 31 verse 18 through 20 tells us she perceives that her merchandise is profitable. Her lamp does not go out at night. She puts her hands to the distaff and her hands hold the spindle. She opens her hand to the poor and reaches out her hands to the needy. Not only is she hardworking for you and I and for those in her family, and not only willing to get the job done for them, but guess what? She's willing to go above and beyond to get the job done for others. But she has enough will to carry out a ministry that exemplifies the work of God and the words of Jesus Christ. She burns the candle at both ends to get the job done, right? Her lamp does not go out. She lends a hand and she doesn't neglect the needy, but receives them with an open hand. A mother is a true example of the ministry of God, seeking to serve and not be served. So above everything else that she's doing in order to get the job done, she's taking note of those in her life who need her, who need a hand, who need to know that they have somebody to lean on, that they can lean, that they can have a candle, a source of light that will never go out in their lives. I don't know how mothers are able to do all this and still do what they have been called to do and enjoy life the way they need to enjoy life. It's amazing how they do this. They're hardworking and they're willing to carry out the ministry of Christ in all that they do, all that they say, 
than wherever they go. Number six, list a mother's mantra, her statement or slogan. She is not afraid of her household when it snows. For all her household are clothed in crimson. Proverbs 31, verse 21. Right? Her mantra, prepared. Always be prepared. Right? I think it's the motto of the Boy Scouts. A mother prepares for the unknown. She overpacks. She considers the outcome of every situation before it even happens. A mother is prepared for the snow, the rain, the heat, the cold, the smiles, the laughter, the scrapes, the bruises, the tears, and the sorrow. Her household is clothed with protection. Simply put, a mother is prepared for life. I can't tell you how many times I have gone somewhere with my mom and I'm like, man, I forgot something. And she goes, don't worry, I got it. Or she goes, or I, I end up being cold. And she goes, don't worry, I got your sweatshirt with me, right? Still at the age of 27, my mom is taking care of me and I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. I don't know where I would be without my mom. One of these days, I'll think like her and I'll know exactly what I need before I even need it. A mother is always prepared for the unknown. Always prepared to take care of those in her life that she loves. Number seven. A mother is modest. King Solomon recalls, she makes herself coverings. For her clothing is fine, is fine linen and purple. King Solomon is not talking about being wealthy financially like the rich man from Mark chapter 10 by referencing the clothing of royalty, fine linen and, and purple in color. Rather, King Solomon is simply implying that a mother treats all her belongings as important and significant. While doing so, she is modest. She doesn't boast about things, doesn't try to outdo her neighbor, and certainly doesn't seek to be put on a pedestal, maybe except for today. Maybe except for today, we can, we can allow that to happen. She doesn't boast about herself, but gives praise in those whom she loves. She would rather give than receive. A mother is modest in what she does, right? She's come to serve and not be served. She doesn't want to put herself on a pedestal, but put, but put others on a pedestal so that they can be recognized and feel welcomed and appreciated for who they are. Number eight. A mother has and is a model. After talking about working hard and, and giving, we read that a mother has a model, a role model. Her husband is known in the city gates, states King Solomon, taking his seat among the elders of the land. Proverbs 31, verse 20, right? She's got 23. She's got a role, she's got a model, she's got a role model to look after, to look upon. The woman's husband is a respected elder in the city, and, and he lives in such a way that her husband is supported in that position and, and not derailed, derailed. It has not derailed it by her actions, right? She's respected that position. She's looked at him as a role model, and in respect, she has become a role model herself. Essentially, a mother is a model for what it means and looks like to be uplifting, to be a support for someone, someone who is going to be there for you no matter the situation, no matter the outcome, no matter the frustration and stress, and no matter the risk it takes to get you to become who she knows you can become. A mother uplifts you and is a model for what that looks like. She chooses to support others because she knows that others are going to be looking upon her and saying, you know what, I want to be like her. I want to do what she does. I want to, I want to think like her. I want to walk like her, right? A mother is a role model that she always will be. Finally, number nine. A mother is filled with wisdom. Proverbs 31, verse 25 through 27 asserts, Strength and dignity are her clothing. As she laughs at the time to come, she opens her mouth with, with wisdom, and the teaching of kindness is on her tongue. She looks well to the ways of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. Again, a mother is clothed in strength, and her dignity. Her respect is what gives her the teachings and wisdoms we need to hear. A mother is filled with joy and laughter. It's okay for a mother to laugh, to enjoy life, to take a minute for herself, believe it or not. It's okay to allow them to pause and to breathe, to regain their strength, 
A mother is filled with wisdom. I don't know how being sent to my room was a form of wisdom when I was growing up, but I'm sure there was wisdom in, in this form of punishment. And in this wisdom, a mother is a teacher of kindness, always doing good, not harm, always willing to offer a hug and not walking away, and always right there to pick us up when we fall. A mother finds ways to put others first. She gives the bread to her household, to her family, before she serves herself. She is filled with strength and dignity and wisdom, and again is willing to serve others before she serves herself. She has worth and love that guide her to be the person we need each and every day. A mother has worth. A mother demonstrates goodness and trust. A mother is hardworking. A mother takes time to plan things out. A mother has been given this divine strength to care for others. A mother is willing to do the ministry of the Lord, opening her hand to people, to all people. A mother offers protection and preparedness. A mother is supportive. A mother is filled with wisdoms, teachings, and love. A mother is all these things and so much more because she is a gift, right? This worth is a gift, a blessing given to us by God. She is all these things and so much more. So much more. The 31st chapter of the book of Proverbs closes with these words from verses 28 through 31. Her children rise up and call her happy. Her husband too, and he praises her. Many women have done excellently, but you, but you surpass them all. Charm is deceitful and beauty is vain, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Give her a share in the fruit of her hands and let her works praise her in the city gates. Let our mothers be praised today and every day because they are a gift. They are a godly figure in our life who has certainly surpassed them all. When I think about my mom, I think about someone who surpasses them all. I think about the many adventures we've taken, the places we've gone, the things we've done, the many ice cream drives, the words of wisdom she has shared with me, the tears that, that we have seen on each other's face, the teachings that have changed my life, the, the funny expressions that come across her face when she gets mad, don't tell her I said that and the random thoughts that have caused us to stop and say, what, 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 what do you mean? You're crazy. Really? I also think about the love that she has given me for the past 27 years. A love that can never be taken away. All the hugs that brought a smile to my face, the many I love yous that have been shared over the phone and cards, the support that she continues to give me today and, and the many pictures that rest in my memory. When I think about my mother, I think of someone who King Solomon describes, but I also think of someone who was much more than those things. My mother, probably like many of your moms, is indescribable. It's hard to put words to someone who is perfect and a gift given to us by God. My mother, and I don't know, and I don't know how, will always find a way to love me they will certainly find a way to love you. The message Bible states in verse 31, give her everything she deserves. Adorn her life with praises. Today is Mother's Day, a day that we recognize all the mothers and mother-like figures in our life who deserve our love and appreciation and who certainly deserve our praises today and every day. When you think about your mother, what do you think about? What do you remember? How will, you show her, how will you show your appreciation for the mothers in your life? King Solomon provides us with nine characteristics that describe a mother, but we know, we know there are many, many more that can be added to his list. What is a mother to you? What is a mother to you? Happy Mother's Day to all the women out there. Let it be so. Let us pray. Dear Jesus, thank you for our mother and all the mother-like figures in our life. Thank you for their love, their support, their care, their comfort, and their strength. Oh Lord, help us to show our appreciation to the mothers in our life, not just today, but every day. Each and every mother is a gift, 
a blessing from you, O Lord. So help us to receive this gift as we praise them and love them with the love that they deserve. All honor and glory is yours now and forever. Amen. Before I offer a blessing, I simply just want to say Happy Mother's Day to each and all the mothers out there. May this day be a blessing to you. May this day be a reminder of how much you are loved. And may this day be a day made for you to just relax, to enjoy life, and to look around and, and truly be thankful for what God has given you. Today is your day. Live into it, cherish it, and allow those around, around you to treat you specially. Happy Mother's Day to all the mothers out there, and thank you for loving us, for not giving up on us, for caring and supporting us, and for always being there. And for thank you, and for always being the gift in our life. In her book, I Love You, Stinky Face, author Lisa McCart reminds us that a mother's love is all we need in life. At the end of the book, the little boy says, I love you, Mama. And the mother's reply is, and I love you my wonderful child. May all the mothers and women today and every day be blessed with a love that warms their heart, makes them smile, and reminds them of how important they are. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, go living and experiencing the love of your mother today and every day as you show them appreciation and praise. And all God's people said, Amen, Amen, Amen. Happy Mother's Day to each and every mother and mother-like figure out there. May your day be blessed and loved. Happy Mother's Day.